Well, here we are. The final episodes of The Owl House Season 1. Honestly, it kind of blows my mind that Season 1 came and went this quickly. We waited two years for The Owl House, and it felt like so long, yet also just flew by. And now you're telling me that by next month, Season 1's going to be over? Yeah, I guess I can accept that. Hopefully Season 2 isn't too far behind either. And with the end of Season 1, we have confirmation that Emperor Bellos will appear this probably is him. I was skeptical in the past, but I'll hold the L and just say, yeah, it makes sense that this is Bellos. So let's go through the rest of these episode descriptions, and as always, give some good old speculation. Of course, spoiler warning, aside from Emperor Bellos because Disney itself is flexing him, if you do not want to know anything about these upcoming Owl House episodes that already hasn't been shown through promos and trailers, click off now. With all that said, let's dive in. On August 1st, we actually have two episodes, Really Small Problems and Understanding Willow. In Really Small Problems, King confides in a carnival fortune teller who makes his dream come true, but it comes at a cost. Also, Tibbles returns. Now, obviously, this is a King episode, but I'm really hoping that the description is covering up an Eda B plot. No offense to King, I'm just kind of burnt out on his cute and cuddly side, but maybe this episode will surprise me and develop him in a meaningful way. After all, we can assume that his dream is to once again become the King of Demons, which a lot of fans theorize to be an actual true fact about him. Perhaps this episode will dive into that, the title correlating to King's small stature when he used to be a hulking beast. Just some food for thought, but more than likely this episode will deal with the shrinking spray bottle from the app game Witch's Apprentice, which involves multiple objects that appear in the show proper. Maybe King wants to make everyone around him smaller, or maybe he thought he was getting a growth potion, but ultimately, Luce gets shrunk. The bottle app's description reads, Handy if you need a change of perspective or want to be the tallest in your friend group. This episode will likely explore both of those. A change in perspective, literally and metaphorically for Luce, and being the tallest in the group could be the goal for King. But instead of growing, that bastard Tibbles gives him the shrinking spray. As for understanding Willow, Luce, Willow, and Amity take a trip down memory lane. Rachel McFarlane, sister of Seth McFarlane, guest stars as Mrs. Blight, Amity's mom. Let's go! Amity's mom shares the same voice with Haley Smith. Number 362, let's go! Of course, this means we're getting Amity backstory, which assumably explores her need to be the best in school and her competitive nature. But this will also explore Willow's backstory, since whatever we learn about her upbringing may organically tie into Amity. They're falling out, how they were best friends, but then... <laughs> Overall, I believe this is going to be a great character development episode, which will likely involve the Memory Tweezers, which, according to Witch's Apprentice, extracts images of memories, which allows them to be preserved forever, or, if they are damaged at all, to start a chain reaction that destroys your mind. <laughs> yikes! The Memory Tweezers will definitely be used on Willow, as the title of the episode implies, but we can assume that the Tweezers will get damaged, forcing Luce, Amity, and Gus to figure out a way to save Willow before her brain is mush. Fun! Also, Gus wasn't mentioned, but sometimes you can just assume. Afterwards, on August 8th, back down to only one episode, seriously? No, I'm kidding. I, I, I'm definitely fine with just one a week. <laughs> Disney, never do to your cartoons what you did to Star's final season ever again. Please. Please! But we have Enchanting Grom Fight. Luce experiences Grom, hex-sized version of Prom, and it's not what she expects. Now, from the Season 1B trailer, we know this episode will have some loose and amity shipping fuel, but I'm more invested in the inevitable appearance of the Grom Tiara, which, of course, originates from the Witch's Apprentice app game. The description reads, Woe to the child chosen to wear the Grom Tiara, for they shall face unspeakable danger in guises that fill their heart with dread. To everyone else, have fun out on the dance floor tonight. Yay, Grom! Now, it's already a popular theory in the fandom that the Grom Tiara will cause Luz to see her mother, Camilla. Background details such as the chains add up. It was a fake out this entire time. What? Cartoons have never done that before and then use it as advertising bait. Ha 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 ha. 
Although, I still want to see Luce's mother come to the demon realm. And if anything, the appearance of her here, even if it's a fake out, serves to remind us of that plot point, and how Luce checking in with her mother at home may need to happen sooner than later. What is Luce going to do once the summer's over? Go back home? And then what? What if her mother gets a phone call that Luce never showed up to summer camp? The hype is driving me insane. In general, I can't wait just because I love episodes where the characters are in fancy getups and there's action afoot. The following week on August 15th, we have Wing It Like Witches, which has the very big synopsis of not your average underdog story. Um, okay, so what is this about? This doesn't tell us anything. It's funny, but it doesn't give us much to work with, which has me think this will either be the calm before the storm or an episode that leads into the storm. Maybe it's vague because it deals with something major like Ida's curse. Maybe it's something to do with Hexide. I don't really know. Not much to speculate on. Now I'm keeping my eye on this episode. Actually, now that I think about it, Wing It Like Witches is probably the basketball episode since I don't know anywhere else that could fit in, unless it's a B plot not mentioned in the description, but this still makes sense as the combo for the storm. A lighthearted episode, although, since Ida is facing off against Lilith, not only can Lilith get dunked on, but it'd actually be a smart way to set up their tension, their sibling rivalry, and how desperate both sides are to see the other's perspective going into the season finale without making it totally depressing. And that takes us to the final two episodes of season one, which from the description sound like they're going to be a two-parter. On August 22nd, we have Agony of a Witch. On a school field trip to the mysterious Emperor's Castle, Lou strays from the group and into danger. Now, a field trip is a great way to utilize the school setting and set up Emperor Bellows. And because we're at the Emperor's Castle, I think we should be in store for some, you know what I'm gonna say, it's on the tip of my tongue, I want that sweet Owl House lore. Come on, this is the end of the season. Season finales, this is what we've all been waiting for. Now, will Lou stray into danger from her previous association of King Anita that causes her to be recognized? Or is Lou's proactive to the point that she recognizes or suspects something or someone? Like Lilith. It makes sense she would be the chaperone or tour guide on this field trip. Or maybe the field trip coincides with a plan. Ida sees an opportunity. Loose, while they're distracted with the field trip, me and King are gonna rob the castle. Sounds like Ida. But that takes us to August 29th, the end of season one. Young blood, old souls. Luce's skills as a witch are put to the test when she attempts the impossible. Matthew Rice guest stars as Emperor Bellows, alongside series cast members Wendy Malick, Sarah Nicole Robles, and Alex Hirsch as Ida, Luce, and King, respectively. Let's go! Oh! Got the entire roll call in there! Now, what is the impossible that Luz is attempting? A big spell? Or just a rescue mission? As we know from the trailers, Lilith eventually will have King in her clutches, and assumably Ida won't be too far behind. Assuming they won't have to abandon the title of the show, aka leave the Owl House itself, my biggest expectation for this episode is that we'll get a better idea of the Owl House's overarching story. What exactly is the big picture? What does Bellos want? Why is the Boiling Isles itself magic? Is there a giant bio from the giant the Isles reside on that they draw magic from? Or is it something sinister? I want a big recontextualizing moment. Will I get it? Probably not, but a boy can dream. Also, the first letter of every episode title in this season spells out a witch loses a true way. But uh, what does this mean? Luce loses a true way to become a witch? A true way home? Does Ida lose a true way to remedy her curse? Does King lose a coupon and that's like a true way to yummy yummy food? I don't know. What does it mean? I guess it'll make sense to us and blow our minds away at the end of August. But as always, these are just my thoughts, and I would love to hear yours. What do you think? Are you excited for the end of the Owl House Season 1? Are you excited for Emperor Bellos? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below, or tweet your thoughts at RoundTableVids. And for more of my own thoughts, you can find me at AshikVox. We're also on Instagram. Help Gentle Girl by either becoming a member of this channel or supporting us over at Patreon. 
link in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please start a like and subscribe to the Roundtable for more great cartoon content. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have an awesome day. Ultra Clots, signing out.